Welcome everyone. It's Friday. Yes, it's uh, it's Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny Day, and uh, I don't know. Maybe we will discuss the virtues of the fertility idol, among other things. Plus, Alaning is here. My understanding is he has a new chair. I'm very excited to talk to Alan. Plus, we'll be talking about the new Mission Impossible movie. Alan and I both saw it earlier this week. We will give you our early reactions. And <clears throat> so, so there's good news on the horizon. Also good news. Did anyone see that Dune Part 2 trailer? Alan and I are going to look at it. I am pre-coffee. But let's get started. Let's go. It's Film Threat on a Friday. It's a holiday weekend. It is a holiday weekend. So let's have fun. Let's go. Where's, I can't, where's Alan? He's not, Alan isn't, um, dang. Going down. It's 32. <laughs> Still no, still no Allen. 32. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I broke a chair. Uh. Dude, are you, first of all, are you okay? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not. Look, in my defense. In my defense, I've lost twenty pounds in the last two two in the last month. Oh and my so, god! Oh no, that's yeah. getting cool. <laughs> I I can't I can't. Oh god, uh, where where is Alan? 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 Al? Alan? I, I don't know. Do I have to say Alan five times? to get Alan to show up on the stream, who understands and has an appreciation for fans. Well, he's 19 years old, she's 32. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they just uh, keep rolling in. I... Yeah. Okay, a lot of people. Well, hey, I, videos I, I think videos. we should fess up. Uh, that was all staged. I, I flew out to Dallas because that was the only studio that we could do that stunt in. So right, right. It was, was well worth the trip to to Texas to do that. Well, you. It was the fall herd around the net because your family reached out to you. You told me like they were like they all watched it and they yeah. all thought it was hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, I had my, a couple of my cousins reached out. Uh, my my daughter can't can't stop laughing about it. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I mean, first of all, I'm glad you're okay. It wouldn't have been funny <laughs> if you weren't okay. But <laughs> you just dropping out of frame. I, I love it. It's funny. It's like everyone's like, "Are you okay? Are you okay?" I'm going. It's just a chair. A chair broke. <laughs> <laughs> but you just <laughs> fell. It just like you. Okay, just, no. It was like a cartoon. Well, the, the thing is, is what, what bothers me in those clips is that uh, they had to add sound effects. I'm going, isn't the original crash sound perfect enough? Why do the you have to Okay, the original crash sound, it really sounded like a crash. It was crazy. I know. It was nuts. I know. Uh, it, was a, it was a hardwood chair with steel legs. And it was and the broke steel them. legs that, uh, that broke underneath it. Oh, and, my uh, God. <laughs> Well, I saw that um, I was I got a, a fright and a scare this morning when I saw that Alan passed away, yeah. uh, and I realized it was Alan Arkin. So, yeah, Robert Paul Champagne, who's a member, says also R.I.P. Alan Arkin. Yeah, when when I was a kid, there was a time where my parents got Showtime. In my area, cable was very scarce, and so uh -huh. we got it. We got it in in one house we lived in, and uh, I must have seen the in law at least twenty times. Wow, the in laws, yeah, yeah. Alan Arkin, uh, I, absolutely brilliant, I, absolutely brilliant. So, 
Yeah, let me go. Let's go. Let's see who's in the chat today before we get started. We're really talking about two movies today, maybe a preview of another film. So we're talking about the new Indiana Jones, the new Mission Impossible. And Alan and I also saw a film called Joyride. So we're just going to give early reactions to those, not, not full reviews. Let's see who's here today on a holiday weekend. Captain Trevsko says, looking forward to this. And then several boxes of popcorn. Uh, I am unknown. I hope MI7 is great. You'll know very soon. Eric Stratton, best movie and indie movie channel in the business. Frank and Triple X-Ray Girl Dad are killing it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's... Uh... Hi, Dad, I miss you! So there you go. It's, it's If you mention her name, she'll come up. Uh, Madam Isabel Melvin Wangarada the Fourth. Yeah, it could have been shaved and and the goddaughter was annoying as hell. Bright side, I love Harrison Ford and Mads Mikkelsen. Now I'm looking forward to Oppenheimer, Barbie, and M.I. Robert Paul Champagne, hail chat. And Ms. Mr. Smith, I love Chris, but has he ever given a reaction or review without spoiling? <laughs> I might have to leave when M.I. has talked about. We, it, we're literally going to talk about it for five minutes. And I'm not going to spoil anything that you haven't already seen in the trailer. So I pretty much stick to trailers. And look, I'm sorry if you get that impression. Um, I try to sort of dance around things. But uh, what can I say? By the way, he jumps off a mountain on a motorcycle. Yeah, that's in the trailer. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, and if a competent team had control of Indy, this movie would have passed the reins to short round. That actor is riding high since everywhere, everything, all at once. Yeah, I have some uh, news on that one. Oh, okay. Enrico Palazzo for five. Any chance you guys could get an interview with Hal Hartley or Jeremy Solnier? I'd love to hear what they are working on. <clears throat> We've interviewed Hal Hartley on the Film Threat uh, in the Film Threat magazine in the print days. I'm sure. It, usually, when we're pitched people that we're going to interview, it's because they're selling a current project. We are going to get to talk to you in August. I've already arranged it, and I watched the movie. It's a documentary about Jackie Martling called Joke Man. And Jackie Martling is going to be here. He's going to be here, I think it's the first Friday in August. I believe so, yes. Yeah, going to be fun. Uh, thank you for the five. Feeling Dangerous 113 for five. Hello, Chris. I saw your Mad Heidi review. I want to watch it, but can't find where to stream it. Their Twitter page says you stream it back in December. It's coming out on Blu-ray, I believe, the weekend of July 21st and we are going to get the lead actress and Casper Van Dien are coming on the show. Oh, hey now. And I think that it'll be on VOD at the same time. So it's just not out yet. I um use an app. I use an app called Just Watch. Okay? Just Watch is a great app. It tells you uh when things are coming out and then what platforms it even price compares. So if you're looking to stream it, you'll find you might actually already have the streaming service where it's streaming. So, cause I've bought things where it's like, wait, but it's on Netflix. Had I known it was on Netflix, I wouldn't have rented it on Amazon. Right? So use this app called just watch. Another super chat came in for four nine nine from big Jojo can't think of anything funny, so I'm just going to lay down and listen to the live stream. Aww. God bless. And Z says, F Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So, uh, oh, a couple more super chats here. Craig Wilson for five. Happy Independence Day to all. Well, let me just say this. I'm wearing a Film Threat shirt. It's patriotic. We also have like a rainbow-themed Film Threat shirt as well but it's it's modeled off of star trek the motion picture poster from 1979 but in any case uh i declare the month of july american pride month if you are proud to be an american the month of july is now officially american pride month for the entire month starting on saturday july 1st through the 31st it's one of the longest Months of the year, American Pride. I'm going to celebrate it. I'm going to celebrate it all month. And I know that Canada Day, Canada just copies all our holidays, don't they? Uh, Canada, yeah. just, 
They and, they, and then they claim it that they were the first. You know, it's yes, like DNA so. is July first, so they must have invented it. I think I think Thanksgiving is a month before before our Thanksgiving. So of course they invented it. Yeah. Well, the classic American holidays are always the best because we we take it too far. And I love it. For me, Halloween is like a month-long celebration. I literally put up my Halloween decorations around September 30th, and I keep them through like the first week of November. So yeah. I love it. Um, yeah, in I, our house, Christmas is a year-long celebration. Well, there you go. Yeah. Beowulf's Revenge, they just shouldn't have made it indie, an Indy 5. Ford was old when they made Crystal Skull, and that was some 15 years ago. Steffi Hall, first time watcher of the live stream. Love your shows. Greetings from Munich, Bavaria, near Germany. Oh, well, thank you for joining us. Yeah. That's great. I hope you enjoy. Yates. Yeah, that's awesome. Shuxi, I bet they get to two thirds of the movies today. Hey, we're only covering three movies today. <laughs> and it's a, it, we're kicking off the holiday right. Hey, Shuxi. Uh, and Sean Condon, Alan's such a good sport. I pray for the inner peace this man must have. Lol. <laughs> you have inner peace, don't you, Alan? Yeah, I do. I it's like funny. It. It's funny, Alan and I were hanging out when we saw Joyride earlier this week. We we're just hanging out at this sushi place called Sushi Stop, which has now why am I there? Not for the sushi. They have one dollar, <laughs> one dollar beers, one dollar beers, and one dollar sake. Anyways, uh I, this is true. Uh two different groups of people came by and said that they watched the show. I know that was it was, was weird. weird. It was being recognized uh for being on YouTube. So, yeah. Uh, film Facet, could this be Film Threat's greatest viral moment? I think so. And One Punch Man Tolkien fan says, I hope Chris brings up Anna's drunk RRR review. I saw that. I saw that. And, yeah, she is dead wrong. She's dead wrong about RRR. I saw that review. I love Anna. I think I like that she... Someone was even saying in the chat that she could actually be a legit attorney because she's so like strong in her views. So yeah, she's no, I, I love Anna and congrats to her. She just got engaged uh, to her boyfriend and you know, I don't know. She's great. I, look, I don't care. People can have different opinions. I don't care. So uh, here we go. Alan is a level 69 Zen Buddhist says Shuxi and Philip Pavelka says, what's Alan's dog's name? Yeah. Well, I'll give you a hint. It's named after, she's named after a party drug. Is it Molly? Yes, it is. <laughs> I, I'm surprised I know that. <laughs> I'm surprised I know that. Elliot Cecil for 499. I honestly loved the first hour of Indy until the car chase happens. That's when Helena became unbearable. We'll we'll get to it. We'll get to it. Nazero for 249 euros. Thank you for all the amazing entertainment. Well, thank you for hanging out with us. And Lord Thoth, our intrepid mod, says like, share, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and join us as a member. By the way, members, we are doing a members only. Uh, it's not going to be a live stream, but we're going to be streaming with members who are part of the jury for Critics Court. Critics Court will not be in session next week, even though I have my gavel right here next week because of the holiday a, a lot of people are taking july 5th off that might be alan yeah there's a small chance i'll be here there's uh, a chance he'll be here but i'm going to be doing a special review episode of uh, mission impossible the new mission impossible movie i'll be doing that on july 5th instead of critics court it's also going to be it would have been hard to book people for that day so i just said let's just you know court goes in recess for holidays we're going to be in recess but we're going to do hollywood on the rocks which we haven't done in a while so there you are thank you lord thoth we appreciate your work here let's get into it <laughs> let's get into it uh wait we're gonna we're, here's what we're gonna do actually we're gonna do this we're gonna talk about the dune trailer we're gonna do a, a, a reaction to the dune trailer So here we go. Um, first, I, I have to say, well, one, um, I'm a Dune fan. I bought this back in when the original Dune first came out. 
They had a line of toys. They were not very good, but here is a Dune sandworm. When anyone ever sees this on my shelf, they're like, why do you have a bizarre sex toy on your shelf? No, this is from the original David Lynch Dune. It is a Dune sandworm. And I've read the book, read the first book four times, four or five times. I listened to it recently. There's a new release on Audible of the first of the first Dune book that is performed. So they hire like uh, male female actors to sort of play the parts. And there's it's even augmented by some music. It's fantastic. But I that book changed my life when I was 14 years old and read it for the first time over a summer. I couldn't believe it. It just opened my eyes to a whole new whole new very different science fiction universe. It was very, very different from Star Wars, right? There's not robots. Spaceships are not a big part of it. And uh, it's a, a more advanced version of civilization. So um, I, I just, I just, I love the book. It, it just, it, and, and what's interesting is reading the book is the character in the book, Paul Atreides, the lead the protagonist is 15 years old. So I read it and I'm about the same age as the protagonist. So it just had a profound effect on me. And then when the, um, when the David Lynch movie came out years later, uh, I was depressed. I, it was because I love one, because I love David Lynch. And one of my all-time favorite filmmakers, you know, Eraserhead, Blue Velvet, etc. Uh, David Lynch, just absolutely brilliantly talented filmmaker. And um, I was disappointed. I think there's a three-hour 4K version of Dune that is actually on YouTube. Look it up. It's It actually is a much better version. That was the movie that David Lynch was trying to make. He was trying to make uh, an epic they made, they forced him to cut it to two hours. It is not a t story that can be told in two hours. It just isn't. So kudos to Denis Villeneuve for recognizing, hey, this is, I'm just going to tell the two halves. And and it, he even said, um, in a quote, the director says that Dune Part 2 isn't a sequel. It's just the continuation of the story. So what we saw in the first Dune film was the fall of House Atreides, and this is now the comeuppance. Let's take a look at the trailer. I am going to uh, scrub through it because I don't want to get copyright struck by Warner Brothers, so I'm going to keep the audio kind of low, but you need to see this. You need to see this trailer um, after. It is, uh, my God, it is, it is just incredible. So uh, I'm going to keep the audio kind of low here, Alan, as we scrub yeah. through it. Uh, here we go. You have not seen it, right? I have seen it. Uh, no, sorry. I have not seen it. This, this is your original. Look, right? so I'll be honest. It. I'll be honest. I have seen it. Yeah. Okay. I, all right. I, 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 talking about it. All right. All right. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah. Just got to stop for a second. <laughs> the epic nature of this. And by the way, that ring that he has, that is the. Uh, Duke, Duke Leto's signet, it's the signet ring. Yeah. I have that ring. I, I you know what? I'm, I'm, a, I'm gonna go, I'll be right back. I'm gonna go get it. I'm gonna go get the ring. Yeah. I, have the, I have the ring. I have it. How about this, mm -hmm. a, a lot of movies of late, the special effects have been weak, have been almost tired. Like we've seen that before. We've seen that before. As I watch this, when you look at the those two big effect shots, there's some mm -hmm. ship that's being hit. There's she's shooting out some weapon that uh, there's. It's it's almost like the explosion is being contained in a shield. There are types of effects we haven't seen before. This is the problem, I think. Also with Star Wars, is it's become so tired. You know, I remember like when Luke first ignited the lightsaber. You're like, what is this? I've never seen it. Now someone lights up a lightsaber and it's just like a yeah, Tuesday. It's old hat, yeah. It's old hat. It's nothing. It doesn't mean anything. Whereas as I look at this stuff, it looks so original and different, like nothing I've seen. It sounds different. It feels different. And it, it also feels, it has that verisimilitude where it feels real. Yeah. I mean, that opening shot with the, what is it, that pod thing that's uh, bombarding that one spot in the desert? Right. I, yeah. I mean, that, that is, that's 
as real as it gets. Oh, it just it it's and it, it the, the sound it's just Balkan is the Padasha Emperor. I know I had to double take on that one. Is that the, the so Shaddam awesome. the Fourth? It's it's gonna be great. I mean, he's like hundreds of years old. It's uh, because the spice will keep you, you know, alive. It's it extends life. Uh, anyways, and, and, and we still haven't seen like a full worm shot yet. So I do like it, it, if this is them holding back. I hope there are no more trailers after this. Like, just we've seen two trailers for Dune. Don't show me anything else. Just let me know when tickets are on sale. Because yeah. I, I think a full worm shot will be incredible. Yes. Alan, you said that on purpose. <laughs> There's so many times, like, I don't realize you're just dropping straight lines, and I, I'm not. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. Okay, <laughs> we're so used to movies being shot in the volume yeah. that, that look fake and just don't feel real. And I, this, this, I mean, they went to these locations to film. Uh, it's, I, I've seen some pics of the production it's it just it there's it there's more to that it's just mm -hmm. uh, okay oh my god dude i'm so pumped for this you have no idea <laughs> i mean i've been waiting for a proper dune film not that like i i do think that david lynch the fact that he could distill that story into you know what was intended to be a three-hour epic film is is pretty remarkable and if you look at the production design wardrobe uh, among other things, he really, I mean, you can see Denis Villeneuve kind of copied some things from the David Lynch Dune. He does sort of, it's almost like the first Dune movie was a first draft of what the movie could be. And now Denis Villeneuve has the benefit of, a, 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 in addition to the Sci-Fi Channel series, which is reviewed on the Film Threat website, actually. Yeah, I think you reviewed it. You re I, it's, I think they're reviews of all the Dune incarnations, which is basically two. Uh so there you go. But uh, yeah, I, I can't wait. I, I got it. You know what? I'm going to, I have to get my ring. I'll be right back. I just have to show okay. you the ring, which I got from China for 40 bucks. It took forever to get here, but I, I have it. I, I mean, was it, it uh, was it advertised that way? Is this a, like a, a replica replica or something or, or did you just buy a Chinese knockoff? Uh, but uh, let's see. Sorry. We're, we're trying to check if rumble's working. It, it is working. Um, but I'll just say, yeah, I did review the first Dune. It was kind of a challenge sent to me because I had never seen the first Dune. There we go. Yeah, that's, um, I have several editions of the book. Just, I don't know, when they put out, so this is probably my favorite in hardcover. And then this is the ring. This is the exact ring that Paul has that was in the first Dune. And it's in, featured prominently in the trailer. I probably shouldn't even tell people, but it's, uh, it's available and it's, I found it on Amazon. I found it on Amazon. So there you go. Um, so I got to ask you, I mean, yeah. you know, I, I don't think I asked you this specifically, but mm -hmm. comparing the first movie to Peter Jackson's take on Lord of the Rings, I mean, where do you, where do you kind of rank it? Oh, well, see, I've never read the Lord of the Rings books. I have read the first four Dune books. I, I started to read Heretics and didn't like it. I just didn't like it. I don't know what to say, but uh, I, 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 I can't wait. I can't wait. It's look, and some people are going to nitpick. It's not exactly. I mean, ultimately I think Dune probably should have been, because if you look at game of Thrones, game of Thrones completely ripped off Dune. It's very much about power struggle between houses is what it is. And, and uh, gaining that seat on Arrakis is so important. And that's, you can tell that George R.R. R. Martin lifted a lot of ideas from Dune. Uh, I, I think that Dune is probably best as a like 12 hour mini series just for the first book alone. You could make it that, maybe even two seasons. But uh, I mean, I'll take this movie because it just looks absolutely epic and something we haven't seen in a theater in a long time. Let's go to some chat comments and questions. We're gonna to get to Indiana Jones and Mission Impossible. So let's do that. Uh, do you think the they adapted it well into the first part of the movie? Says Philippe Pavelka, who's a member. I, I, I like the first Dune part one. I think he did a very good job and it's fairly accurate to the book. It delves into things that David Lynch just didn't take the time to do, which is fine. Uh, um, so yeah, it, it's a good look. Movies are always cliff notes versions of books. Let's be fair. Okay. 
And the book is, but I see the book as a separate thing that I also love. And I can additionally love this movie. I would imagine there's a lot of exposition missing in the, in the film versus the book. JTP RX says last Dune was boring to me, but I've never liked Dune, but understand it is loved by others. I think the first Dune or the way he broke it up, it's really a setup. It's a setup for the payoff in Dune part two. We're getting the payoff. Stephen Lorney, I do love the Lynch movie and the TV show much better than the new one. Fair point. Uh, let's see. Sean Hu for 742. One thing that Crystal, Crystal Skull got right was getting Indy and Marion back together. Now there's a new movie. Well, there you go. Big Worm for five. Should I read the books first? I haven't seen one yet to give me the chance. Um, I don't yeah. think so. Yeah. I would read the book. I would read the book. And and I recommend the audible version of the book that is currently available on Amazon. The It is uh, performed. So you hear when the actor they got to play Baron Harkonnen in it, like, sounds awesome. He's got this sort of guttural, deep Darth Vader-like voice. It's fantastic. I, I will say I've not read the books. Uh, and I will say that this one was the one that made more sense. Uh, to me, as a story wise, especially the the entire setup of this of this Dune world, mm -hmm. um, the the Lynch version and the TV series, it took me a while to really under try to figure out what was exactly going on. Uh, but this one gets you right into it. Right. Uh, Sean Z, comic construct for nine nine nine. Do you guys think the le the lever the grass audiences? Attention for normal viewer, despite how amazing they filmed it and the techniques they used to film film it uh i'm not sure i 100 percent understand yeah. your tank to, question, but uh i'll just say that um i think mainstream audiences are are gonna are, are going to grasp it because he really took time especially in the first movie to kind of set up the world there are a lot of things that went unexplored in the first film and i get it there's so much to this world in terms of language i remember when i saw the first dune uh dune in, in 1984 uh, the you know the first Dune movie, David Lynch, they handed out before the screening. I got into an early screening. I film threat didn't even exist, but me despising that version of Dune so much inspired me to create film threat. That's how deep <laughs> it is. Like in like, I, I, I just I, I I care so much about it. But uh, they handed out. A, a thing with like all these different definitions of terms. So when someone says Muad'Dib or the spice or, uh, you know, like all these, and it was just like, I, I just can imagine it being very, very like, you know, just overwhelming for someone that doesn't know Doom. Yeah. So what, what Denis Villeneuve has is the benefit of David Lynch's movie being out there for like a long period of time. What mug are you using right now, Alan? Oh, Disney Disneyland. <laughs> Get yourself a film threat mug. Go to <laughs> shop.filmthreat.com and you can have this very mug that I'm using right now to drink coffee. But yeah, I think I think that Denis Villeneuve benefits from Dune kind of being in the culture so people kind of understand it. You don't need to explain what a lightsaber is, right? Like in Star Wars, so there is there is a sort of pop culture shorthand that filmmakers benefit from doing films that, you know, he's doing an adaptation of a film that has been adapted before, but using modern technology. So, um, and I think it's incredibly well cast. Uh, Eric Stratton for 1777. Have you seen Something's Going to Live, Doc, Robert Boyle, and 80 to 90% 90 YO art from directors from famous movies, Birds, Mockingbird, mostly new, however, most mostly how newer FX took away teamwork with directors and actors. I have not seen that. Something Something's Going to Live. I haven't seen it, but I am aware of this issue. I am well aware of this issue. Uh, from Rumble, GM Gauthier, meh, I don't know. Sorry to be a Debbie Downer, but I'm kind of tired of do-over movies. Nope. Disagree. You should see I it. I mean, if you, yeah. If you do it better. You should see it because, you should see it because, it, it, because they, David Lynch did not, was not able to do that second half 
of the story, he kind of got the first half, the fall of House Atreides, but the rise, the comeuppance, the resistance, all that, he was yeah. just, didn't have the screen time to do it. It's all done in montage. And he kind of rushes to the end. Yeah, It, it should have been, it should have been two movies. It's kind of like a rushed fantasy film. Uh, right, right. Uh, Yash Shriv, Shriv Vastava says, if I'm seeing the trailer, it needs to be IMAX. I agree. Uh, order now, Attack of the Dock on Blue says Retribution Zero for Two. Yes, Attack of the Dock is available. I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, MM for five. I think the first movie should have ended with the shot of them seeing Arakeen burn. Give them more time. Give more time for setup of the rest of the story. Sure. I, I don't like the way they ended it. Uh, and play- I remember when we saw it, uh, you know, because we there was no guarantee there was going to be a part two. Yes, when we and saw it, just it. ended, and it was like, you know, there's got to be a part two. Yeah, X Douchey McDouche X. We need a film threat flask to sneak into theaters. I will keep that in mind. That's a great idea. Chris is dooning so hard right now. Yeah, we're about to do a revamp of the film threat shop. Yeah, uh, hopefully, Zendaya isn't a Mary Sue, says imperfect. Well, she's very talented fighter, like when he meets her, so um. In the book, she is powerful because she's a Fremen and they, to survive in the desert, you must be a fighter. So she is that. I hope that she can, she can pull that off. And more cowbell, says Frederick. Cack, smart. Full worm shot, says Imperfect. <laughs> Lori Ormond. Hey, Lori. Dune was ruined for me by South Park. Every time I hear about the spice, I giggle. Well, there you go. It's fair. Mike MZ Wong. Hey, Mike. This actually looks expensive. No way Indy 5 looks like it cost $300 million. Fair point. We'll get to it. And Frederick Kaxmarks. Jodorowsky's Dune documentary is pretty interesting. Yes, Alejandro Jodorowsky's Dune is a brilliant documentary. Uh, you should see that film. It is a great documentary about um, the never... The, Alejandro Jodorowsky, who did one of the greatest midnight movies of all times, one of the greatest deconstructions of a Western El Topo. See El Topo any way you can. Um, he was going to do Dune in the early 70s. And he created this book of production sketches. And you see how this unmade movie, which he pitched to every major studio in Hollywood, had a profound impact on science fiction, fantasy, and genre films going forward. I don't believe we would have gotten to Star Wars or movies like Alien and Blade Runner without this unmade movie. It really is pretty amazing. Um, Aaron Taylor says, WB basically promised Villeneuve part two when they put part one on HBO Max. Oh, I didn't. I was not aware of that. Thank you for that. So there you go. Uh, Alan, any other thoughts? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I, Yeah, I, I think... Uh... I mean, I don't think I'm blown away by it as much as you are, but I am still excited about this movie, uh, especially after seeing the first one. But, uh, you know, it hits all the right beats. I, I'm just saying, uh, you know, th- it's just this running theme that they, they have. Well, it's Zootop- I don't think Zootopia is Pixar. It's not. It's a Disney. It's, 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 it's- You know, it's the father who doesn't want her daughter. Yeah, that's her. I had to, <laughs> I had to time it just right. <laughs> I had to time it just oh. right. Uh, so there you go. There is the uh, trailer reaction for Dune. And yeah, she's, look at her back there. She's disgusted. Well, she's there you disgusted. go. She is upset. And now she wants to leave. And let me just you say, guys. let me just say, uh, I'm going to share screen again. I'm going to share screen again with something. Uh, Attack of the Dock is now currently available on Blu-ray. It is available for pre-order. So here it is. It's the Attack of the Dock Ultimate Collector's Edition Blu-ray. Now available on the Film Threat shop. You can get it. Just go to shop.filmthreat.com. Check it out here. It is, I am holding the prototype in my hand right now of the disc. There are, if you watched all of the content that's on the disc, it's 28 and a half hours. 
I added it up. We included uh, the extras include, there's a commentary track. There's an hour of deleted scenes with a commentary about how we made the movie. There are Easter eggs on every single menu page. And there is a secret Easter egg uh, menu that it's just a piece of art and you have to like move around the screen. We made it pretty easy to find the Easter eggs, but they're everywhere if you look for them. I took all the interviews with, I did with over 20 uh, interview subjects that are in the documentary and there are extended interviews with everyone. So like you'll hear for five minutes, like Anna David or Laura Foy in the movie, they're like in it for about five minutes, but then you can hear my like full hour, hour and a half interview with everyone from the documentary with like amazing stories about G4 TV. It's, it really is like an ultimate collector's edition uh, disc, which is why it's a dual layer disc, which means there's a ton of stuff on it. And uh, just go to shop.filmthreat.com. And uh, I believe it's under the category on sale. You will find it available for pre-order today, starting today. So check it out. I need a little, I need a little banner for that. So is that film threat and attack of the dock? Is that what you're saying? No, it's, it's just go to shop.filmthreat.com and it's on the film threat shop is where we're offering. I don't want to do, I don't want to build a whole new like website just to sell one product. Yeah. I am just selling it on the film threat shop. Okay. So currently available for pre-order shipping the first week in August is when it'll be shipping. So uh, pick it up. Hey, get something. Uh, well, this won't ship until August. If you order something else, that'll come separately. But yeah. And then uh, what if people are going to Comic-Con this year? Well, I there is a possibility. There is a slim possibility that I will have discs before Comic-Con in San Diego. If I do, I will do a signing and be selling discs in uh, San Diego. And if you order from the Film Threat shop, I'll throw in a free sticker. We have Attack of the Dock stickers. So you'll get a bonus sticker. Uh, yeah, I might, I, uh, I will just follow me on social media or Film Threat on social media because I am going to see if I can do like um, a meetup. We are doing a panel. Alan and I are doing a panel, which is Thursday. I believe it's Thursday, July 20th. 20th? Yeah. Thursday, uh, July 20th yeah. at 4 p.m. at That's the scenario. Marriott. It's going to be me, you, Dante, uh, and possibly Eric July from the Ripaverse is going to be at the panel. So that'll be a lot of fun. But you asked. It is now available, shipping in August, and I'm excited for you to see it and to uh, – to because the Blu-ray, I've been working on this Blu-ray for it's a hundred percent now on Rotten Tomatoes. We got extra reviews, and there you go. Trailers. There's a special music video that we're going to release in August. That's on the Blu-ray. Um, extended interviews, deleted scenes, a poster gallery, and this is weird. We created the set of Attack of the Show in Second Life, which is this metaverse, and from the disc, there's a special link. You can actually go to Second Life and visit the set of Attack of the Show. A completely digital recreated in the metaverse set of Attack of the Show. And the only way to do that is to get this disc. It is, I've never heard of anyone doing an extra like that ever. So I'm, I'm really, yeah, over 25 hours of special fee, 28 and a half if, because we added it up. So, so there you go. Alan, uh, yeah, you should buy it. I will buy it. <laughs> or maybe someone will give me a copy. <laughs> well, only if you review the Blu-ray. <laughs> so, all right. What should we talk about first? Mission Impossible or Indiana Jones? Tell me, chat. What do you want to hear? Are we going to suffer? Oh, a couple couple chat comments and questions. Oh, wow. Uh, from Buford T. Justice for 50. Well, it's 49.99. Indie film recommendation, a 2017 film called Prodigy. Very good dialogue and intriguing story. And the two main characters carry the film. One of the main actors being a little girl. Go get Attack of the Dock and support Film Threat. Yes, pick up Attack of the Dock. You'll, be, you'll actually be supporting 
uh, the people who made the film, which is myself, Bobby Schwartz, Walter Areas, among others. So pick it up. But thank you, Buford. That is incredibly generous. AJ Matheson for 20. 20, just to say how much I loved Attack of the Dog. An hour and a half just hitting me right in the nostalgia berries. I loved it. Well done. Thank you. And we are going to be doing in August, we're going to be doing a watch party. So kind of like, you know, I'm going to give it a couple weeks for people to get their Blu-rays. And then we're going to do a live watch party on the Film Threat channel We'll pick a day. Maybe we'll do it on a Tuesday night. How about that? A DV Dues Day. And the other thing is to celebrate Attack of the Dock coming out on Blu-ray starting in August. This is this is news. This is a big announcement, Alan. Uh, starting in August, uh, I'm bringing DV Dues Day back as a segment. I shot 40 episodes of going through my DVD and Blu-ray collection and talking about movies. And every Tuesday and Thursday, we're going to drop a, an episode of DV Tuesday. It's going to run from starting in August through the end of the year. So look for that. It's, uh, I, I'm bringing all it, I mean, it's basically just me talking about DVDs, but they're DVDs from my personal collection. So I'm going to talk about like bootlegs, laser discs, rare discs that I have. I kind of do them in chunks. So I talk about like in one, I talk about David Lynch movies. So I go through all the different rare David Lynch uh, DVDs that I have. And uh, yeah, starting in August, DV Tuesday is back. 40 episodes and and if people like it, I'll continue. But um, they're all like like five under five minutes ish of me just talk. And it's 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 kind of like I kind of just took stuff off my shelf. I'm going to talk about this for five minutes. So is there a Dick Shark episode? Uh yeah. I mean, it gets it gets pretty. Yeah, starting okay. in August because Critics I'm looking forward Court, to that one. Critics Court will end at the end of July. So. There you go. Thank you, AJ Matheson. Appreciate that. Derek Rosenfeld for five. Hey, Derek. Fellas, I will be in LA for a week starting next Friday. Is there anything special film-wise going on in the area in the area you suggest checking out? Yes, Derek. Meet us at Yard House next Thursday. Uh, oh, you're next Friday. Uh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, I would actually go to the AMC Burbank 16, go to Yard House, and then check out the seven-foot-tall Batman statue. It's great. Uh, I would also do the touristy things. I would go to the TCL Chinese Theater in Hollywood, you know, go to Hollywood and Highland. Don't venture too far. There's a lot of homeless and awful things in that area. But yeah, yeah. stay in that area. And yeah, but um, at the AMC Burbank 16 on Thursdays, we do a movie meetup. We just now it's like it's like 20 people now. It's it's a growing group, which is a lot of fun. But Derek, yeah, uh, join us there. But check that out. Armchair Troop for five. How about you put Zack Snyder on trial for the murder of the DCEU? It would be fun to hear arguments with some Snyder bros. Um, we are going to allow our audience, when we when we deliver the verdict, the verdict and, by the way, the sentencing. And you will not believe who is going to be on the show for the sentencing on behalf of Disney. One of the actual defendants, maybe? I'm not. I don't want to give it up. Okay. I'm just saying... There will be the final on Wednesday, July 26th is the final episode of Critics Court for this season. And we will do the verdicts, which you will vote on. We will do the sentencing. And then after the sentencing, you are going to pick what we put on trial first. Or, or excuse me, next. Nice. What we put on trial next. So we're going to list a bunch of franchises. The one that gets, gets the most votes is the one that we will do. Will it be Marvel, DCEU? Will it be Paw Patrol franchise? I don't know, but there'll be a lot of different choices. So thank you, Armchair Troop. We're going to leave it up to the chat to decide. So I hope we've got a couple thousand people watching for that vote because you're going to vote on every count and then you're going to vote on, on what we put on trial next. And it's more than likely before the end of the year, we'll begin a new trial. Rick Johnson for five. Chris, did you get my package? Hope you like it. Oh, what was in the package? I haven't checked my mail in a couple weeks. So let me know what was in it. And a few more chat questions before we pivot. 
Aaron Taylor, Sound of Freedom has a one-day showing in my city on July 4th. It is currently outselling Indiana Jones and the Diaper of Density. <laughs> Insane. Um, I do plan to see that movie, Sound of Freedom. We should review it next week. I believe I put it yeah. on our schedule. Paw Patrol, really, Gracie? Yeah, Paw Patrol. Uh, Derek Rosenfeld for 299. What time on Thursdays at Yard House? 5 p.m. 5 p.m. at Yard House is when we generally meet, and then we generally go see a movie that starts about 7 p.m. Why are we there at 5 p.m.? Because of happy hour. Drinks are $2 off, and appetizers are 50% off. It is great. Uh, John Flera says, hooray for the Blu-ray. We can send copies to Eric Weber's house for him to finally watch the doc. Uh, we don't talk about Eric Weber anymore. We just don't. Uh, he's doing his thing. I'm doing my thing. And, um, you know, uh, say, I, la vie. say la vie. There you are. It's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it is what it is. Film threat from rumble, uh, light, Zero eight one six. I am going gonna see this Dune movie because I am thirsty for a sci-fi fantasy movie. It's also like not. It's bloody and gory. I'll be shocked if it's a. It'll be a PG thirteen, but they're gonna push it to the limit for sure. And Shuxi Threat Level One has been a member for eleven months. Says just ordered Attack of the Dock Blu-ray. Ah, oh, well, thank you for that, Shuxi. You are not going to be disappointed. It is shock full. And look for the Easter eggs. I put in some really weird Easter eggs. One was, one of the Easter eggs, I'll spoil it. One of the Easter eggs is a video that my kids were in. So you'll see my kids in this parody. It's a parody commercial for a cereal called Franken Prairie. And the kids in it are my kids. And the, the, the uh, people who produced the segment got in big trouble because you're not supposed to use kids. Even though like I'm the parent. I, they're like, hey, we need some kids for a segment. Could you? And I'm like, yeah, you could use my kids. They'd love it. They took a half day of school. They couldn't pay them legally. So they got like all, they came home with all this like free stuff. My son got this huge Nerf gun and they got like toys and like they paid them in stuff. Uh, it was great. So one last, uh, uh, one last super chat here. I've seen you several times at AMC. Is it lame to ask for a high five? Zach? Ask for a high five, man. People say people say hi to me there all the time. They usually say, hey, here's what they say. Is they see my hair. They say, hey, hey, I watch you all the time on Film Courage. And I'm like, you know, I have a YouTube show, right? Like, you know, everyone like they know me from Film Courage. It's kind of it's kind of sad. Like, like I like doing those things on Film Courage. I might do some in the future, but... But, uh, you know, you know, I, I, I just, uh, I'm doing my own thing, but I'll, I'll, I'll do film courage again at some point. Yes, so MK Solid, MK Solid says, wait, MK Solid, I want to answer this. MK Solid said, chat, what happened with Weber? Was there beef? A real simple. He didn't come to the premiere of my movie, Attack of the Dock in April. He chose not to go to the movie because he said he was tired. And then I said, well, you can watch it. It's on Amazon or I'll send you a link. And uh, he doesn't want to review the film. And I don't know why. And I just kind of realized um, he just might not be a very good friend. Why would you not see your friend's movie that is well-reviewed? People seem to like it. And I and I started to realize that there are people in Hollywood that just, uh, you know, they're very Hollywood about things. And that's all I'll say. Eric doesn't also Eric thinks only his opinion is the one that matters and no one else's opinion matters, which is really just childish. He doesn't respect other people's opinions and he goes after people constantly and I could give a fuck. So I, I think that he's ultimately a coward and I think he has been outed as just a terrible friend. I mean, not only did Alan come to the screening of attack of the doc, Alan moderated the Q and a when I was, that we did three Q and A's because it showed three times, and I was trashed. Oh my gosh, I, I wish that third one was on the. On it's the Blu -ray. well, the Blu-ray does have the Q and A from the screening. Yeah, just not the, the good one. Yeah. Uh, hey, 
I made a live show. Congratulations. Your guy's channel is growing fast. Some say Indiana Jones is not that bad. Should I or should I not see it? Don't want to get hurt, says H. Uh, is our transition here. We're, we're, we're going we're gonna to pivot and talk about it in minutes here. Just I want to get through these chat comments questions. Rick Johnson for two. It was a set of unaltered original Star Wars movies in 4K. Well, there you go. Uh, oh, Ministry of Wrong Thing. Indiana Jake and the Denial of Disney. Oh, that's good for 199. I love that. Love it. All right, let's pivot. Let's pivot. Alan, that's like your cue to put up the different backgrounds. Uh. See, Alan, here's what's funny with Alan. Sometimes Alan doesn't realize he has a role on the show. <laughs> You could put, put the. <laughs> that's not what I meant. <laughs> I'm saying. No, he wants me to do it. Then I do it. But that's not what he meant. No, that's not. You have to change the background and put up the thing. But I don't even know which one we're going to. Whether it's Mission Possible or uh, or Indie. I guess it's Indie. Let's talk about Indiana Jones. So we should start by saying uh, I want to thank. Uh, the film threat audience for releasing me of my obligation to see this movie. Uh, I, there are, to me, there are only three Indiana Jones movies: uh, Raiders of Lost Ark, Indiana Jones and Temple of Doom, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, and uh, and I'm very happy. And uh, and my memories of Indiana Jones will grow and will blossom. And uh, you know, I have, so thank you very much for for everyone. I appreciate the chat. Well, there you are, and I want I want I want to do a quick test of how big of a fan you all are. Everyone recognizes this, okay? This is the fertility idol from Raiders of the Lost Ark. What people don't realize, because you saw Indiana Jones kind of running around with it, if you look closely at the very bottom, this 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 uh, idol is a woman parting her butt cheeks and delivering birth to a baby that's coming out of a place in the bottom. It is literally the fertility idol. Everyone recognizes that. But do you recognize this right here? This bottle of whiskey. If you're a fan, you will know. I probably need to put some in my mug at this point. I'll have to put some of this. I, I, I need a little. Um, this is a reproduction, a prop replica of the bottle of whiskey that Marion was drinking in the tent with uh, Belloc. It's just a, I keep it on my shelf, like amongst uh, all my, in, in my, in my little bar area. I keep it there, but no one recognizes it. All right. Let's get into it. I saw Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny for a second time, and um, I just felt sad. It, it was actually worse a second time. Sometimes movies can can actually grow on you and get better on second viewing. This movie did not. So upon second viewing of this film, I just was, uh, I, I started to get really angry. I just started to get angry about it. That look, I and and and, and not just because of the way that that Harrison Ford is portrayed, but the way that Kathleen Kennedy seems to be interested in simply castrating all the male characters from Lucasfilm properties. Let's go through it real quickly. We already know about Luke and Han in the Star Wars sequels. They were, they were very openly uh, diminished effectively castrated as male characters. If you look at Willow, Willow is kind of sidelined, another brunette female protagonist. Star Wars sequels, brunette female protagonist. Now we have Indiana Jones and the castration of the Lost Balls. And you see what Kathleen Kennedy has done. Uh, it's another male character created by, you know, really created by Harrison Ford, Steven Spielberg, and George Lucas effectively, collectively created the character of Indiana Jones. And 
Harrison Ford's portrayal is just amazing. If you know anything about the making of the first Raiders of the Lost Ark, a lot of it was they they didn't have a lot of money to make the movie, oddly enough. And what they did was they improved a lot of things. Like Harrison Ford likes to improv or try things out. He did a lot of his own stunts. It's a very physical performance. And and what you when you see what Kathleen Kennedy has done to all of these, it's no surprise that, of course, another female brunette takes center stage and diminishes the male lead. And it's, um, I don't think, I think, and you, look, you can accuse me of being sexist for thinking it, um, whatever. I think that you could have cast a different actress in the role of Helena who would have been likable. And she is just objectively unlikable. An unlike they tried to make her unlikable in the way that like Han Solo's a scoundrel in the first Star Wars film. He's a scoundrel. He's only in it for the money. Then he has a change of heart. And they tried to have this similar uh, similar path for Helena. It doesn't it doesn't work. And I I would argue that you could have cast someone else who could have made that role better, even like a Jennifer Lawrence. If Jennifer Lawrence was in the role of Helena, Jennifer Lawrence is just more likable. Phoebe Waller-Bridge is in, insanely unlikable, incredibly unlikable. And I, I will admit that the first like 20 minutes of the movie, I kind of enjoyed because it felt like it felt like an AI copy of an Indiana Jones film. Like it was like, oh, they copied like the sort of like, you know, Indiana Jones is he's trying to get the artifacts, but he's, you know, having to improv. He's he's like. There are moments of levity and humor mixed with action and surprise. And he's got to kind of improv his way out of whatever mess he's gotten himself into. First 20 minutes is kind of fun. And and uh, Mads Mikkelsen is really good as Jürgen Voller. He's just the embodiment of evil. I really, I really liked his portrayal. And I'll, I'll say the even the most minor roles are very well cast. Like Jürgen Voller has these two heavies, one with a Southern accent, a mustache. The other guy is like, it's just literally a heavy, like a bit. He's just huge in stature. He's got to be like seven foot tall at broad shoulders. Great. Great. He's like jaws from the James Bond films. Uh, so the casting so well done. And I'll say it's well directed. It is Phoebe Waller bridge and the script that is the weakness of this. And I, I just, Alan, I think you made the right choice. Uh, well, the, the chat, well, made, the chat the, made the right choice. Yeah. The chat made the choice for you that you did not see it. And I'm seeing as I go through social media, people that I know in the space that cover pop culture and movies are actually choosing to not go see the film because they don't want their memory of Indiana mm -hmm. Jones ruined. Uh, I respect that choice. It, it looks like it's also going to bomb at the box office. I mean, it was... It was a packed crowd, but the AMC Burbank 16 is always packed. It's one of the biggest movie theaters in America in terms of profitability. And it's become, after the closing of the Arclight Cinemas, it's become the theater that everyone goes to. Um, you can regularly see, not just me there, Christopher Nolan goes there as well. Uh, a buddy of mine, Tyler, saw uh, Chris Nolan there with his kids seeing... Um, the new Spider-Man, Spider-Verse. So there you are. Uh, but back to this. Um, it didn't It didn't grow on me as some films do. You know, upon second viewing, I can, I can slightly change my mind about a film, but it just made it feel worse. I just felt sad. It's not the way I would want to see Indiana Jones go out. There are two worthwhile parts in the movie, so I am going to ruin it. Uh, the first 20 minutes feels like an Indiana Jones film. And the last, the the very end of the film, there's a brief scene with Marion that is very touching. Uh, I, and I, I uh, just seeing those two actors and Karen Allen there, it was great. It was really great, that that final scene. But they really kind of set it up. Uh, Sorry. Perfect. Can we, what do you? No, I'm trying to star something and it shifted on me. And like... It's okay, man. Okay. It's okay. I, I appreciate that Alan's doing his job, <laughs> doing his job there, along with Ms. Peak Coffee behind the scenes. Um, 
so yeah, bottom line, this is, I will, I, I'll just say that Indiana Jones, the dial of destiny embodies everything that's wrong with modern Hollywood. It is embodied in one film, everything wrong. The, uh, castration and diminishing of male leads, the sort of uplifting, um, a, a feminist, uh, character as a way to replace the male character because she's the bestest ever and and good at everything it's it's just it's everything wrong with modern cinema embodied in one film uh maybe an overuse of digital effects to the point where things just don't feel real and and it just i felt sad watching it it's like this is how this is how indiana jones as a character goes out mm -hmm. We just saw Picard season three where they took and we took they took these actors that are, you know, all around Harrison Ford's age and they don't they're just they're themselves. The youngest. The youngest uh, was uh, LeVar Burton, who's 16. He was uh, how old, Alan? He's uh, 69. He's 69 years old. And uh, he was the youngest of that entire cast. And, and we got closure with that. You know, it's like, oh. finally, you know, after the last horrible Star Trek movie, uh, Next Generation movie, it was just like, that's how we're leaving it. And we have closure with Picard season three. Closure. And, uh, and it was great. I, I really hope that they don't make any more Star Trek The Next Generation. They're talking. Uh, Patrick Stewart's talking. They'll make a movie. Please don't. Uh, Terry Metalis did an amazing job with season three. It's also an anomaly. Everything I'm hearing about Strange New Worlds is it's awful. But yeah. Indiana Jones of the Dial of, of Destiny yeah. should be taught in film school as to how not to reinvigorate a franchise. Literally, Kathleen Kennedy has taken every fran every intellectual property, all the IP that Lucasfilm has, and she's destroyed it. And you can't ignore it. And you can call the people making these very valid criticisms sexist, but it doesn't, it, it ignores the fact that these are not successful. It, it doesn't, look, if she made these and they were huge successes box office wise, which is how people vote, you vote. When you go to the box office and you put down money, you're, you're saying whether the studio, studio doesn't care if you dislike the movie, they've already got your money, but you're voting with your pocketbook. And when you vote, and you give money to a film, what you're saying is, I want to see more. I like this. I want to see more of this because that's the only way Hollywood will take it now. Maybe if something's big on opening weekend and it drops, that that's also, you've got to read the tea leaves of the box office. And what it looks like is that people are rejecting this film. People are rejecting it. And I also think that part of the reason people are saying that it's not as bad as I thought, it's not as bad as I thought. Do you know why they're saying that? Because they've been told it's bad. <laughs> they've been told it's bad. So it's buyer's so remorse, basically. Yeah, like since I mean, what was it? End of May is when mm -hmm. they showed it at Cannes. So they have been told that Indiana Jones: The Dial of Destiny is bad for you know over a month. That when it's finally released, it's ah, it's not that bad. And, and and so like if you've heard that, it's sort of like oh, this is terrible. It's terrible. It's terrible. And then you go to it, it's like oh, that was actually kind of fun. So so I it's fine. It's fine, but I think part of the reaction of people is hearing it's bad so often, and then you finally see it and, and think to yourself, it's not that bad. I'm not saying there aren't some really good moments. Uh, the parade chase with um, Indiana Jones on a horse, pretty entertaining. Uh, Indiana Jones, in the first 20 minutes of the movies with movie with the Germans, the deep fake. I won't say the deep fake. The deep fake was the best we've seen it. I think it was terrible in Rogue One with Grand Moff Tarkin mm -hmm. and um, Princess Leia. It looked like CG. It, it, it looked like CG. CG. This doesn't look as bad. It, I think it's the best deep fake, but I almost would have rather have seen a movie just with Indiana Jones at his height than what we got, which is uh, Harrison Ford in the present. I mean, there's a scene where they're scaling a wall in a cave and he's complaining about like his back and his shoulder and his knees. And like, what? You know who? They, you know where that didn't happen? Picard season three, and they're all old. <laughs> they're all old. So, 
you know, I feel like Picard season three is a, 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 taking a legacy, respecting it. It's doing it right. And then, you know, uh, it, the Lucasfilm's output is everything wrong. Mm -hmm. And it makes me sad because Kathleen Kennedy clearly has a view of herself. She does a view, view of what she wants. She wants to replace all of these characters with her. And this castration, uh, you can you can look. This castration of the male characters is, it's it's you can't you can't unsee it once you see it. Or I want to yeah. want to share. Well, that's exactly here. why I'm glad I'm not seeing this because I, you know, I, I don't want to have to unsee this movie, and it's it'll be impossible to do it. This is from my personal Twitter. Here, I'm gonna show you this. It's from my personal Twitter. All I said was, which do you prefer? So there you go. New Hollywood or old Hollywood? I'll zoom in so you can see it a little bit better. <laughs> but there we are. New Hollywood, old Hollywood. Which do you prefer? So my personal Twitter is that Chris Gore. So there you go. Uh, I think that about sums it up. This is what, this is what they want. They want us to look at Helena, make her the hero. But the thing is, it's not resonating. It's not in the zeitgeist. It's not, people are not responding to it in a positive way. They just objectively are not. So, you know, you can criticize the critique, but ultimately you can't ignore it. You can't ignore it. So do you want me to get into the Kathleen Kennedy interview? Yeah, Alan, what, what yeah. happened? There was okay, a so, so today posted uh, Empire Podcast, Empire Magazine. Uh, they did an interview with Kathleen Candy and Frank Marshall. And uh, some interesting things came out. It, it's The interesting thing about this interview is she's very positive about this movie. Um, but if you really dig into what she's saying, you realize that this movie was a mess. Mm -hmm. um, let's just say this uh, uh the driving force behind the story and the the motivation of of indy five was harrison ford um he was very enthusiastic about this he worked with james mangold in the past the two of them have a great relationship and that's how james mangold got hired to do the job because of his familiarity with harrison ford and also james mangold uh brought in the writers so that those are those were his writers um and so, uh, so it, it, the impression you kind of got from the interview was that she was fairly hands off when it came to story and things like that. Um, but, uh, but, you know, this was basically a Harrison Ford, James Mangold production. Uh, in fact, uh, Harrison Ford admitted at D23 that he was the one responsible for bringing Phoebe Waller Bridge uh, into, into Indy 5 here. Um, the other interesting thing is this was a COVID shoot. And I don't know if you noticed it. But, I didn't notice. Uh, the movie began production before COVID. Uh, it went into COVID. Uh, they continued filming. They thought that COVID would end. It never ended. And at one point, I think Harrison Ford injured himself, and uh, and there was a hiatus. And then they completed they completed uh, filming after COVID was was over, or when things got reopened. So it, there was a you know it it went significantly into uh, that first lockdown um and uh, they were even saying that uh, during that first half of the shoot um it, the entire train sequence that was shot during that time and so so there was a lot of during covid they were on location and then when they came back from covid they were in studios and and what what that said to me was uh the production was a mess it was an absolute mess and uh and I don't know. I don't know if you, if me telling you this kind of resonates with what you saw, but uh, you know, I, I'm kind of thinking that COVID, COVID, if anything, uh, played a, a negative effect over the entire film as well. Well, can you bring up the article? It was a podcast. So oh, it was a podcast. Okay, sorry, sorry. Yeah. I, thought, I, I thought I heard you said an article. Yeah. Um, yeah, it doesn't surprise me. I mean, look, no one is gonna. Everyone on a tour like that is always going to be positive, anyways. Mm -hmm. So it, it's just, I feel like when I, when I look, when I saw the movie last night, I'm like, who is, I, I'm saying to myself, who is this movie for? Who is it for? Yeah. Is it, it's not for me because I love the old Indiana Jones. 
Is it for, it's not for the newer, younger audience because, you know, Indiana Jones for them is a 40 year old franchise, more than 40 year old franchise. Right. So, you know, is it for a, a younger audience with the Helena character? Is that who we want to see? Mm-hmm. Ultimately, they missed a huge opportunity by not having Kihei Kwan in this film. Huge, huge. Kihei Kwan returning a short round. Oh, you're not short anymore. Uh, well, you are trying to do Harrison Ford's like, <laughs> I'm trying to do his voice. Yes, you are trying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know. It's just, it's really, uh, you know, it, it's unfortunate we're doing the Star Wars trial because if anything, there needs to be a trial regarding Indiana Jones. Who knows? That could be our second trial. I don't know that it would go as long, but um, yeah, it's uh, it just made me sad seeing it. So what can you say? Hey, let's look at your uh, let's look at your comments and questions about. I mean, look, okay, real quick before we go to that. Uh, bottom line: if you haven't seen the movie and you love Indiana Jones, you might want to avoid it. If you want to see it out of morbid curiosity, I understand. And because it's been built up that it's so bad, it's so bad, and you see it, there are going to be parts that you're going to enjoy that kind of harken back to the old. Indiana Jones that we love. But let's go to chat comments and questions. And for all the movies that we did hear about today, we do know that there are some that have been shelved. Well, they haven't been shelved. Most things haven't been shelved. Development is a complicated long-term process. Mm -hmm. Some people, we're dealing with scheduling because obviously really talented people are working. Mm -hmm. So we don't, it's often not a shelving. It's it's just, is it ready? Yeah. (laughs) Man. You are one pathetic loser. <laughs> All right, let's go to your chat. You mansplaining there? Uh, <laughs> what are you talking about? It's not like she was mansplaining how development works in big Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. To to uh, a, a young journalist asking a very legitimate question, like yeah. what, what happened to all these projects that were announced and nothing happened? I'd like to know. Yeah, that was that was pretty pathetic. Let's go to your comments and questions here. We'll start with some super chats. Richard for five, hot take, Crystal Skull is better than Temple of Doom. I do, yeah, like, I think, you know, it's sort of like saying, to me, the best James Bond is Sean Connery. a, A much more interesting discussion is who is the second best James Bond? And I would say, what is the second best Indiana Jones film? Because Raiders of the Lost Ark, everyone agrees, that's the best. What is the second best Indiana Jones? Uh, interesting, hot take. interesting hot take. I have not seen Crystal Skull since I first saw it in a theater. And I remember part of it, I fell asleep. I was so angry by the end. I just tried to forget about that film. Yeah, and I'll admit, I wasn't exactly enthusiastic walking out of Temple of Doom. Either. Yeah. Uh, but I remember that was the that was the movie that ended up at least beginning the uh, PG-13 rating. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the first PG-13 rated film, but it began the discussion. Red Letter Media did a really good video on that. Red Letter Media did a video recently where they talk about Temple of Doom and it gave me a newfound appreciation for it. So uh, shout out to those guys at Red Letter Media. I love them. Yeah, I'll be honest, Temple of Doom, uh, an Asian actor in the number two role, uh, was pretty exciting. Yeah. Gabriella Condor for 20 euros. Hello from France. Oh, thank you, Gabriella. We appreciate that. And 199 from Just Nova 1138. I think Ford is trying to deflect blame from KK. Possibly. Elliot Cecil for 499. And Mangold knows how to write good, strong men. So I don't think having a character like Helena was his choice. Yes, I agree. Yeah. It's like the audience for this movie was Kathleen Kennedy herself. I mean, one thing you mentioned that James Mangold did was it was the the idea of time and how time worked and -hmm. that that was kind of his main contribution was the overarching theme. Clearly, the execution didn't work. Uh, Just Nova 1138 for 199. This proves KK knows nothing about storytelling. Yeah, she's a producer. She's a producer. They should make another Jack Ryan movie with Ford and an annoying feminist co-lead. Just for the sake of completeness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that makes sense. So what can you say? Yeah. 
Uh, Elliot Cecil for 999. It's a pity because Mangold is a great director. And there are moments that felt like good classic Indiana Jones. I feel like he has the potential of making a great indie movie. Unfortunately, it's Disney. So there you are. Yeah. Uh, I mean, just Ford versus Ferrari. Uh, yeah. My, my last favorite film of his. Uh, it, yeah. Uh, just Nova 1138 for 999. Disney doesn't have creativity. Indy should have been happily married and forced to go on an adventure without the extra without the extra melodramatic crap. Disney stole from The Force Awakens, Logan, Back to the Future, Endgame, not serials. Yeah, it's interesting because it's interesting because Indiana Jones and the original Star Wars were both influenced by classic movie serials from the 30s, the 1930s. But all these franchises, they've they're not influenced by the original source in inspiration. They're influenced by the previous work. So it's like it's like an AI copy of something. That's funny because we'll be talking the exact opposite with the next movie we, we're gonna bring up. Well, exactly. Yeah. 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 So there you go. Oh, Sledge for 199. Chris, rewatch Crystal Skull. You'll feel better. I'll do that. I will do that because I do have a uh, Blu-ray box set and it's in that set. I've never opened that disc. So there you go. Thank you, Sledge. And Slayer 96 DA second for two. Ghostbusters 2016 is the start of the Mary Sue era. We are going to look back on this era of filmmaking and uh, we're going to say, how did so many bad movies get made in Hollywood? And if you look at the box office, overall box office, it's short by a billion. People are just choosing not to go to the movies. Fear of the Turtle, 21 for 10. I didn't grow up with indie and only saw the first three a few years ago. Loved them, but I don't have a strong connection to it. But the disrespect to another iconic Harrison Ford character is infuriating. Yeah, it is. It's, uh, it's, it's sad. Uh, the Joker for five. So what you're saying, Chris, is that KK finally got herself correctly represented as Phoebe Waller-Bridge in this movie. It is probably the closest to probably to kind of how she is because she's just. And when you hear, there's a really interesting quote where uh, Steven Spielberg's talking about how they Kathleen Kennedy was there to take notes and she was trying to contribute ideas, and all of her ideas were bad. This is when they were conceiving of the script because. Uh, Steven Spielberg wanted to make a James Bond movie. He really wanted to make a James Bond film. And George Lucas is like, don't make a James Bond film. I have a better character. Let's." And they went to Hawaii and Kathleen Kennedy was there taking notes while the two of them were getting out, beating out the story of Indiana Jones. Really interesting. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, she's, she, this is the most Kathleen Kennedy type of feminist character that we've seen and she's just just not likable yeah not i mean likeable. you know i think this just calls out again she's a better producer than she is a storyteller yeah uh hey i need a refill on the coffee alan can you keep going with the yeah. chat questions i'll be right back i'll be right back folks i just okay. i'm only on one cup okay so uh let's go imperfect are there any bush hairs in it uh i think chris would say yes there's lots of bush hair in, in it. um Let's see. Is that when Marion was in the tent? Yeah, that goes back to the bottle. Uh, from Rumble, from GM Gauthier. Gauthier. Uh, last Crusade was the last film period. Absolutely. Uh, ba ba ba. Yash. Uh, Shrivan Stava. Yeah, I got all the funny names here. Okay. I walked halfway out through Indiana Jones. You know, uh, on Twitter, on my social feeds. Uh, I know a lot of people who are at least uh, threatening to walk out. So uh, I don't blame you there. Uh, not Pip Boy Gamer. I don't think that changing the actress would have helped at all. The story is terrible. I mean, ultimately, that's it. Story is everything. Uh, it doesn't matter who you put into it. But uh, certainly good actors uh, can make a bad story a little bit better. Um Let's see. Uh, John Flara. Mads Mikkelsen is a solid actor, but does not need to be typecast as the villain. 
Uh, watch his role in another round for a demonstration of his range. I've not seen another round, but I mean, you're right. I think wasn't he? Uh, wasn't he in Rogue One? Uh, I believe he was kind of the good guy in that one. But you're right. Uh, but he just plays into that villain, uh, that villain stereotype. Um, I maintain James Mangold is a great director. He's not the writer or the actor. Uh, yeah, it, it's kind of interesting because. You know, we're going to talk about Mission Impossible and uh, and uh, is it Ralph McQuarrie? Um, you know, the the two of them, I feel like, you know, are are kind of worthy in the same discussion. Both of them, you know, do these kind of big action films. And um, and the sense I got with James Mangold is he he really cares about, you know, the, the, for the both of them, they really care about story and how it's presented. And for some reason, um, when Mangold does these kind of IP type titles, uh, it kind of goes off the rails you know i mean i keep thinking back to um ford versus ferrari you know just a very original very down to earth but a, but an action movie nonetheless and uh and for some reason was, that movie just had a lot of you know themes running through it a lot of story and uh and i just don't know why you know as much as i liked logan um you know it wasn't you know it still had problems and i'm not sure he has you know the ability to do ip well Okay, uh, Carlos Alfredo Lopez R. Alan saved by the chat. Yes, thank you, chat. I will be always indebted to the chat. Uh, Victor Fontaine, lol. There are 39 people in a 500 seat IMAX theater at my AMC 20. All right, yeah, yeah, Burbank's a strange creature. Uh, Rabnad Skobla, Skobla, Skubla. Uh, I really think KK, Kathleen Kennedy, single handedly ruined this movie. I think there was a lot of things. Uh, okay, so I guess as a producer, you know, she's the one who put the pieces together, and uh, and the pieces just didn't work. Uh, Kimberly Moore, I started watching Young Indian Jones Chronicle on YouTube. Yeah, I if you go back to our interview with uh, Sean Patrick Flannery, I talked to him briefly about about Young Indiana Jones, and uh, he talked about how he never got famous off of this. And, uh, and the other thing, I, I feel like if you really watch Young Indiana Jones and you look at the special effects, um, I always say this, but, you know, I, th I think George Lucas was more interested in, in elevating the medium than he was storytelling, especially near at the end. And I think Young Indiana Jones was really about how do you make television look big and cinematic for the budget of a television show? And I think that's what he was experimenting with. With uh, Young Indiana Jones Chronicles, you're back. I am back. Yeah, I am back. Uh, but I could overhear the whole thing while I was making my coffee. Apologies for the break, folks. I rarely, I rarely see an entire movie without going to the bathroom at least once. Yep. Alan knows that. I experienced that the other day, dude. I. You walked yeah. out on a really good part, and <laughs> I'm well. I plan to see that movie again. Yeah. We're talking about Joyride, but let's go through these comments and questions. I see some super chats have come in here. Let's get to the super chats. Uh, Lubitsch touched me for two. Off topic, have either of you seen The Quiet Girl? I have not. Doesn't Alan? Sound, doesn't sound familiar. Doesn't sound familiar. Look it up. It might. Here's yeah. what's funny is there'll be a lot of like, have you seen this indie movie? And by indie, I mean I-N-D-I-E. Uh, and, and the thing is, it's been reviewed on the website, but like Alan and I have we seen can't it. see we can't see every movie that comes we can't, I mean it's I mean oh my with you if you read the film threat website on a daily basis I mean it's uh it's a lot of reviews it's a lot of reviews but uh I I, I have not seen that and if it's out yeah, it's, or coming to theaters it's probably something we can catch yeah it came out last year it's on prime video um it takes place in Ireland in 1981. Basically, a girl neglected by her dysfunctional family is sent to live with a foster family over the summer, and she learns something about herself in the process. I'll bet she's a lesbian. <laughs> All right. Uh, but I have not seen it. Lubitsch touched me. Uh, that's, Alan, that's what gets us canceled. That's, <laughs> I think Alan will review that one, but thanks. Uh, my name is Jefferson for 499. Indy 5 was amazing. Lots of fun. I loved, loved, loved it. Better than three. Nothing will ever touch Raiders. Nothing will ever be worse than four. 
Wow. Okay. That's first of all, yeah. fair point. When so I people are like, why are you going to see Indiana Jones again? And I'm like, because I want to see it with a paying audience. So I saw it with my movie meetup group, and a couple of people in the group were like, it was fun. It was fine. They yeah. didn't it didn't bother them as much. So so but like they didn't like love, love, love it, but it was uh, a reaction where they, um, you know, they, they thought it was better than they were, than they thought it would be. And I think yeah, a lot a of good, a good friend of mine, was. a good friend of mine felt the same way that Indiana Jones felt like a good Indiana Jones movie. Wasn't the best, but it was good. You're talking about Indy five. Indy five. Yeah. yeah uh, so Bush and Ryu cat for five, the secret haters sect has ruined many hero series. Star Wars, Indy, James Bond, Fast and Furious ruined itself. Is Transporter the only macho series left, says Andy? No, I don't think it is. I think what you have to do is you have to, I mean, look at look at John Wick, right? Mm -hmm. Look at, um, there are other things out there. Look at anything that Gerard Butler is in. You know, Gerard Butler does a lot of- yeah. uh, Plain. <laughs> plain. You know, yeah. that other movie he did, which I did not like, uh, Kandahar. Uh, but it, it's, you know, there's other stuff there. I think what's going to happen is Hollywood is finally going to realize that this is not resonating. You can't make a, you can make a movie like this and you can have strong female leads. and It just doesn't resonate on a mainstream level. And I've said this before is, you know, I've been used to a lot of ideas like this are in a lot of small indie movies and it's fine because that audience is like this. A small indie movie will play in two theaters in America, one in New York and one in LA, so they get reviews and then it comes out on video on demand, right? I and mean, that model's been busted by streaming, but- Yeah, I'm sorry. I should say uh, Bush and Ryu Cat, he, he actually sent two super chats with the same question. So just say that this was worth $10. Oh, well, thank you that for that Bush and Rio cat. But yeah, I think that there are other series that are like that. Look at Dune. Dune has very strong men, you know? Uh, so I think you're just going to have to get it somewhere else. And what my my feeling is, is after a while, the studios may learn. They may learn. More Super Chats here. Uh, MK Solid 82 for 199 Chris, can we get a house tour soon? I will do that. I will do that. I am going to, I'm going to send a note to myself to remember to do a house tour and I'll shoot never, a video. I'll, never and I'll, on upload it. I'll upload it for members only. Yeah. My wife will not let that happen here. So. No, no. A house tour, just of the stuff on your shelf behind you. Yeah, that's true. Not the actual whole thing. Yeah. There's room with junk in it too, but. But MK Solid 82, I will do that video, but it's going to be for members only. Because I want to, I want, I want to, I want you to be a member. So there you go. Uh, Mr. Sophocles for 399. Frank Gore is a terrible influence on X-Ray Girl. I agree. X-Ray Girl, this was Gary Beekler from Nerdrotic, uh, his suggestion that her, her drunk name, my drunk name is Frank Gore, who's my e evil alter ego. And hers is triple X-ray girl. And Alan's <laughs> is just Alan. No, it's X-ray dad. X-ray dad. Oh, that's right. X-ray dad is your drinking name. So there you go. Uh, the captain's log for 999. Off topic. But I've recently gotten into the Dune series thanks to the new movie and your review. But do you think the story works better as an episodic series like Game of Thrones with HBO level production? Yes, I do. I think it would be better that way because there are so many areas of Dune that in the movie will be touched on that go into you could go into much greater detail in a uh, in an HBO series. Yeah, it should have been a Game of Thrones, twelve hours, maybe two seasons for the first for the basically the first book. Then you could do all the other books, probably through four or five. I know, but can you make every episode exciting or is it going to be bogged down by lore and, and exposition? Yeah, it will be bogged down by that stuff. But you could savor it. It's sort of like Game of Thrones. There'd be like those talky episodes. Then there'll be like something horrible that happens, which I love. 
Uh, BK Blair, 197 for 10. Might do what Alan does and not see Indy 5. But if I do, I will get a ticket to a different film and see it. Tired of giving Disney and Lucasfilm my money. Hope KK is proud of herself. Aki, for 20 pounds. Off topic. Have you guys seen the Netflix three body problem trailer? What do you think? They're already Chinese anime Dong Hua and a C drama out about the story. I have not seen it. Can you look it up, Alan? Yeah. yeah. A fateful decision in 1960s China echoes across space and time to a group of scientists in the present, forcing them uh, to face humanity's greatest threats. Interesting. Uh, yeah. Is it, is it an anime? It looks like it. Yeah. Or maybe I'm seeing something else here. I, I subscribe to Netflix's YouTube channel. They basically just run trailers and little, you know, BTS stuff. Yeah. So. It's, it is a live action, I guess, based on an anime. Interesting. Uh, All right. Yeah. I'll have to pop on my, I just watched a uh, season six of Black Mirror and I always sort of look to Netflix and like what, what I should be watching next. I'll kind of check it out. Call. Thank you for that, uh, Aki. Uh, call a sign all you card for 499. Joke for death of another strong male character. Why isn't there a pregnant Barbie doll? Uh, there there was a doll that was like that, that actually had a baby in it. Yeah. And uh, it was, uh, you could order it through the mail. I know because I had it. This is in the 90s. It was a knockoff of Barbie, but a pregnant Barbie. I would always get the thing is like, like when I do my little tour, I'll probably do it in two videos. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I'll do a tour for the members only. And I'll uh, show you the stuff that's in this room. And then I'll show you the stuff that's in my uh, living room area where I watch movies, where I'm sitting on the couch when I'm on the Nerdrotic Nooner, when I'm not on camera. It's always because I'm on my couch working. So, but thank you, call sign all you card. Uh, another from call sign all you card for 199. Joke answer because Ken came in a different box. Well, that was a setup for a joke. Ken came in a different box. Yeah, they you should have read those <laughs> two together. I'm sorry, call sign all you card. But that actually existed. It was back in the 90s. I thought it was so weird. I bought one and it her, her little belly came off and there was a baby inside. Very weird. All right. More comments and questions before we get to Mission Impossible 7. And Mission Impossible 7 is not going to be a full review. It's just yeah. going to be an early reaction. I promise you. No spoilers. It's going to be broad strokes uh, about the movie. We've got some chats here from Rumble. So let's get to them. <clears throat> Rumble, Joe Kuhn. I expected to hate the new indie, but I thought it was good. Not perfect. There are a few eye-rolling flea bag moments, but not a lot of belittling, belittling moments. Last Crusade ragged on him. And then, yeah. Constantly, to be fair. Well, that's all right. That's fair. Uh, David March, threat level one. Hey, David has been a member for one month and says, hi, Chris. Thanks for jumping on the hand grenade. <laughs> oh, that's all. That's cool, David. And we appreciate you and your hard work in court. Court will be back in session on July 12th. By the way, Critics Court returns after the holiday. Court is in recess on July 5th. But on July 12th, Court will be back with count nine final arguments with As from Heel versus Babyface and Gary from Nerdrotic. That's right. It's going to be huge. And they will be defending Disney. So uh, if you know them, <laughs> if you know them, they're going to be they're coming Disney. to their rescue. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. More comments. Uh, I, Iceman. I wish Haley Atwell was next, the next everything. Next Indiana Jones, Ray Skywalker, Tomb Raider, <laughs> my next girlfriend. We'll talk about her in a moment. Yeah. Talk about her in a moment. Aaron Taylor, James Mangold produced The Call of the Wild with Harrison Ford. Really? Really? Call of the Wild. That was the one. Ben Workman, Chris Allen, my wife and I are huge fans. Here's to all your continued success and thanks for this amazing content. Love you guys. Uh, well, thanks, Ben. I appreciate that. Uh, 
Well, come hang out at the AMC Burbank 16. Alan made an appearance there on uh, Wednesday. Yeah. And I will be there for the Marvels. I'll be there for the Marvels. <laughs> oh, my God. That's in November, maybe late October. <laughs> yeah. It's a promise. I will be there. Imagine if Chad Stahelski directed Indiana Jones. We fans can only dream. Uh, Chad Stolhelski, did he do, what, did he do uh, Sisu? John Wick, he did. John Wick, oh, John Wick. Yeah. All right. Night, wait, infamous, infamous, he's <laughs> infamous, X-Ray Dad, says Kush. <laughs> That's great. And Keth says, can KK please re-destroy Howard the Duck? <laughs> what if, what if Kathleen Kennedy did Howard the Duck and it was good. I know that's that's that would be the irony of it all. That would be crazy. I, I think she could do it. I absolutely think she well, could. Well, we'll see. And another comment here Jimmy, uh, it's a Rabnad Scub, Scubla is replying to Jimmy Francis. I need to see the equalizer. I'll get around to it. That kind of high octane action is something I like. Need to watch John Wick too. Wait, need to watch John. You, you got to watch John Wick 4. John Wick also. I'm sure there's like a digital collection. Whenever they come out with like a new one, they have like a digital collection. So yeah. By the way, Equalizer Three looks pretty good. Yeah. All right. Let's pivot for a moment, and we're going to hang on. Hang on. It's fall on the floor laughing. Whoa. <laughs> switch. 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 <laughs> But, but, but you I said it after the I funny thing after. is, I don't notice it all the time because I'm kind of engrossed in the conversation. I'm, you know, trying to I, like, and and you will throw out a straight line that I don't catch. <laughs> the chat gets it, but I'm like, I'm kind of like, I'm in the zone and I'm like making my point, and then you'll throw out something that is just, what can you say? Hi, Dad. All right, let's discuss it. Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 Early Reaction. Let me just say this. We've dealt with our, mo our modern Hollywood destroying our heroes. And this seems to be something Hollywood is interested in. That does not happen in this film. I am pleased to report that much like Top Gun Maverick, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 seems like a movie made in another era, from another time. Like it completely ignores modernity, while at the same time tapping into the zeitgeist. Uh, we won't be talking any specifics about the story. Uh, obviously no spoilers, as this is our early reaction. It is action at its absolute best. It's action that feels real. There are, as you've seen in the trailer, yes, Tom Cruise jumps a motorcycle into an abyss. It's insane. There's a fight on a train. There is a chase scene with cars in the middle of Italy that is just, just every, everything that happens, it one-ups itself. And it just feels like, I'm sitting here watching the film thinking to myself, how, this just seems like a different it's it's like it's like you haven't had a really good steak in a long time and you decide to treat yourself and you go to Ruth's Chris Steakhouse and you have a very expensive steak dinner and that's what this is as a film it's epic over the top action sequences it's um a, a story some of the stuff I, I have some minor complaints about the film but we'll talk about it when we do our full review so i'm not going to tell you it's perfect but this will be big i believe in the same way that top gun maverick was simply because it just ignores a lot of the tropes that hollywood is trying to push that that chase scene in italy with it's mm -hmm. just it's amazing and the woman who plays she plays mantis in in guardians the actress's name is uh, palm, palm. Palm Clementief. Cle Clementief. She is amazing. She's one of the heavies. She's a villain, uh, an assassin, 
And she is just, she's so good. She's so good. And Haley Atwell, great. Oh. Oh. She's so great in it. Like she's she's kind of at odds with the uh, you know, with uh, uh, Tom Cruise in it. Ethan. Yeah, what they do with her character is is brilliant. And the other thing is, I'll say this: this is just a little bit uh, about it, which is from the trailer. You hear this speech that the the director of the MI, you know, uh, organization gives the speech. It's the villain in this is an AI. And I will say that the movie does not end on a cliffhanger, but the main the the main task is not accomplished. So uh, to its credit, what I really feel good about is the movie doesn't end on a cliffhanger in the way that Spider-Verse did or other films have. It 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 ends and there's still the threat out there and it's it's in the zeitgeist. What I love about it, and they talk about this in the trailer, is that you can't even trust information out there. You can't trust. And if they want to destroy someone's life, they could just destroy someone's life like that, all with fake news. So it really is like in the zeitgeist of like, do we trust information anymore? What's going on? Is this fake news, so to speak? So and that's something that's out there in the zeitgeist and it's it's there's nothing preachy about it but it asks a question i think the best movies when they deal with social issues when a movie deals with a social issue really good films good art in general literature comic books good art asks questions doesn't lecture or tell you how to live your life or tell you you're a bad person if you don't think a certain way. That is the exact opposite of what art should be doing. Art should, art and a, even a big movie, a big spectacle tentpole blockbuster movie like Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 should ask questions and entertain. And this movie does it, does it like to an amazing level. I'll say this. I didn't like it as much as I like Top Gun Maverick, but the action sequences here just are top notch. Uh, Alan, what's your early reaction to Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning? Absolutely. Park? Yeah, absolutely. This is uh this is just the continuation of the you know, I would say starting with uh Ghost Protocol. Uh just the the quality of the action just continues to ramp itself up and there's some amazing action scenes in this. I mean, that's what that's what Mission Impossible is. It's just uh, a reason to do these over the top stun sequences and it doesn't disappoint if you are a fan of the series uh, again this movie will not disappoint it's it's not my favorite um but it's but it's good it is really good um i like the fact that they cast pretty people in it um i like uh you know i'll i said this afterwards with uh, with dante and polly but um you know this is this is the american james bond and i hate to say it but it's better than james bond uh, you know, it's uh, so. You know, again, if you're if you're a fan of the series, you will not be disappointed. Cool. Well, uh, obviously, strongly recommend it. I cannot wait to see it again. There is a fan screening on July 10th, which is a Monday that uh, I have tickets for, so I will be seeing it again. I might see it again, so I might see it a third time. But really, really enjoyed it. Can't wait to see it again. We will have a special episode of Hollywood on the Rocks next week where we will, we will do a full review with special guests. But let's go to your chat comments and questions, starting with some super chats here from Mr. Sophocles for 599. I loved the original David Lynch Dune. I challenge you to compare the practical effects to today's CGI crap, an amazing work of art. Uh, Mr. Sophocles, please check out the 4K restoration of the three hour version of Dune that is on YouTube. Get it. It's fantastic. Bush and Ryu cat for two. Chris, you know, Duke Togo, AKA Gogo 13, any movies? I am aware of it. I am aware of it. I, my anime knowledge is, is like, I know about stuff, but I don't know everything. I know the stuff that sort of bubbles up more mainstream, like Akira. So there you are. Uh, Chris, uh, it says, Elliot Cecil for 199 says, sounds like another based movie from Christopher. Yeah. Yep. yep. Totally. 100%. Not woke in any sense. Is it better than Fallout or Ghost Protocol? Because 
says Elliot Cecil. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, unfortunately. I but really close. I mean, it's like very close. Uh Chris Wakefield for 999. Christopher McQuarrie has yet to fail yet at a script or director. His first directed film, Way of the Gun, is one of my all-time favorite films. It is so overlooked. Have you seen it? Yes, Way of the Gun from back in the day. From way yeah. back it, in the day. Apparently, Christopher McQuarrie has been working with Tom Cruise on every Tom Cruise movie since like 2012. Uh, so the, the the two are like the, the two are in sync. You know, Christopher McQuarrie has probably one of the best action directors out there today. 100%. Uh, I do have some quibbles. I'm going to get into it when we do the review next week. But uh, yeah, I uh, I like Christopher McQuarrie a lot. And we will discuss in detail the film next week. First of all, Flint is the American Bond, says AJ Matheson for two. Well, thank you for that. Uh, Michael Seagriff, Tom Cruise has power, charisma, and allows no woke crap. Yeah, there is zero woke in this movie. If there's like a scale, it's hundred, it's absolute zero is what it is. And, you know, I'm surprised there wasn't like a, you know, even in the casting, he just doesn't care. Mm -hmm. He knows what appeals on an international level. And this movie is, it's, we already know it's going to be a hit. We already know. From Rumble. Uh, Goldfoot, pretty uh, Goldfoot, pretty stoked for this one. Maybe the last ongoing franchise I'm interested in. Well, it's true they keep getting, you know, destroyed. Uh, Joe Beatty, is it best? B Joe Beatty, is it best to see Mission in IMAX or Dolby at what theater? Uh, I'm gonna see it in IMAX because that's what Tom Cruise wants me to do. <laughs> I'm gonna listen. I'm gonna listen to Tom. I love. Okay, here's I. I I, first of all, I love Tom Cruise. When we review this next week, I'm going to dig up an old video. I love Tom Cruise so much. I did a show uh, back when I was doing the new movie show on FX in 1990, in the 1990s. Okay. I did a tribute to Tom Cruise. I'm going to find this old video clip and I'm going to show it on the show. And, and that was 1990. In the <laughs> 90s. I did a thing about, and the other thing I love about Tom Cruise, have you seen that video where, Maybe we'll show that too next week where Tom Cruise talks about the, you know, that like um, that H high frame rate thing. Like yeah. when you go, you'll go to like a Best Buy or a Costco and you go to where the TVs are and you're watching Return of the Jedi, but it looks like an old soap opera. I hate that. Tom Cruise did a video saying, stop doing that to movies. Uh, I mean, the guy loves film. He is a film, even though he's not never been a director, he is a filmmaker. He understands the craft. He thinks about the audience. And I think he has an innate understanding of what audiences want. And that is critical to having a film be successful. I would say this, see it in IMAX first, then in Dolby Digital. It I looked love, great in Dolby. I, we saw it in Dolby Digital. It was in, and the, the sound, sound, the sound. Was crazy. it the, the, like, the jump, the, 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 the motorcycle jump, the sound on that. Uh, incredible. By the way, Tom, Tom Cruise wants you to visit a Scientology center near you. Well, there you are. Uh, I don't care. The thing is this, I don't care what Tom Cruise does in his personal time. He can, he can, you can, he can practice whatever religion he wants. As far as I'm concerned. Uh, because he's not pushing it on me. He's not, no, seriously, he doesn't push it. That's his belief, and I think he keeps it to himself. The jaded filmmaker says, not listening to Alan until he explains that KK line, <laughs> that she'll do a good job on something. Yeah, like okay, it. so the, the point there was that Howard the Duck was so bad that Kathleen Kenny will remake it so bad that it's good. She'll make it even worse that it will swing around and be a good movie. So bad it's good. Well, there you go, Jaded Filmmaker. The Nerd Far Away, we have Gore Rants. Yes, we also need lessons from Gore. All right, Gore should Rants. I do lessons from Gore? I could do a segment called Lessons from Gore. Lori Ormond, 
If I started a drinking game every time Chris says zeitgeist, I may be dead. <laughs> hey, thanks, Lori, who's a member. Thank you for that. Yeah, I just, because people don't talk about it enough in the sense that the reason things do not resonate, the reason these movies are doing poorly at the box office is because they are not tapped into the zeitgeist. And the zeitgeist is what will resonate with people. And it's not resonating. So there you go. Tom Cruise is keeping Hollywood alive, says Imperfect. I would agree. And how did you see the Mission movie, Chris? Says a different vibe. There was an early screening at Paramount. I'm not the only one who saw it. It was critics from Los Angeles. The embargo drops on Wednesday, July 5th, which is when we will do a special episode of Hollywood on the Rocks. We're going to rank all the Mission Impossible movies. We're going to we're going to have a lot of fun. So join us on July 5th where court will be in recess. And I saw it with Alan, Paulie from Latino Slant, and Dante James from Verbal Riot Show. Elliot Cecil for 499. When Spielberg, McQuarrie, Nolan, and Martin retire, we will no longer have movies where there aren't agendas. Well, I think you'll have weak directors that don't push back. Yeah, I think uh Chad Stahelski is probably the the, yeah, uh, the one coming up behind, but there's not a lot. There's not a lot. There, there needs to be directors that push back or executives that say we need to get out of the agenda business. Yeah, get back to show business. So we need to make movies people want to see. Mister Sophocles for two nine nine. Frank G stole Madonna's Botox. R I P Madonna. Wait, Madonna is dead. No. I've never used Botox in my life. You know what I do? I wash my face and I use moisturizer. That's what I do. And I think clean living, just being happy, I think it sort of kept me. I mean, I feel I feel really young. I'm definitely not young. I can tell you that. So there you go. Yeah, Madonna was hospitalized and she's at home now. Is that real? Yeah. Okay. Well, there you are. Attack of the Menace for $4.99. Wouldn't it have been nice if Indy was watching a movie with Willie Scott at the beginning? That would have been special. Such a missed opportunity. Oh, that would have been cool. Like an old film that she's in, like where she's got like a part of the... That would have been hilarious. Am I missing something? <laughs> uh, Willie yeah, Scott. Willie Scott, yeah. There's, you know, she was at... Um, she was, uh, you know, in that thing. Okay. No, Alan's daughter at MI7. So sad. No, Alan's daughter. No. No, that's a long story. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. What yeah. can you say? Hey, uh, Chris, what did you think of Edge of Tomorrow? I couldn't find your review online, says Stan Smith for five. Uh, I love that film. I'd, I was, was I working for G4 when that came out? No. I think it was no. sort of in between where... G4, that was in between. So G4 ended and then that came out. I just. Yeah, you know, it came out in 2014. Like, yeah, so that was after G4. I don't think I was actively reviewing films at that time. I wasn't doing YouTube. So, I mean, I did see it, but I wasn't actively reviewing films. I don't really review films on the Film Threat website at all. I review films here and have conversations. Mm -hmm. So there you go. And. BK Blair 197 for two off topic. What kind of dog is that of Allen's? Yeah, we think it's an American. She's an American bulldog. We uh we actually literally rescued her. She was uh in a junkyard lot locked up for over a week. And uh, some friends of mine basically climbed the fence and pulled her out. We found out that someone was breeding her and then they just abandoned her in that lot. And so that's that's you know, why she it's has just this running theme that they, they have. Well, it's Zootop on. I don't think Zootopia is Pixar. It's not. It's, it's a Disney. It's a Disney. It's a Disney. It's a Disney. Racist, even though I guess, but you know, it's the father who doesn't want her daughter. <laughs> um. All right. Well, uh, 
we're well there you go we're gonna leave it at that folks uh want to thank want to thank alan for being here yeah well thanks i'm not gonna talk to joyride or uh we're gonna wait we're gonna we're gonna wait on joyride okay We'll wait on Joyride. We gotta we gotta wrap it up and leave it there. We'll Joyride's coming out in a couple of weeks. We've got time to cover it. Um, but Alan, what do you have coming up this weekend? Yeah, uh, two things tonight. I will be at the uh, Chinese Theater in Hollywood. Uh, my friend is premiering Wait, a film. You're uh, gonna think... what time? I'm being. I'm going. Oh, which which film are you seeing? At Dances with Films at five. I'm seeing the shorts. Okay, I'm seeing uh, after that. I'll be there after that. For the movie Unfix, uh, a friend of mine, like I said, is uh, wrote, wrote, directed it. Oh, that's great! Yeah, I yeah. know. The, okay, so all right, Alan and I tonight, Friday, June thirtieth, we will be at the TCL Chinese Theater in Hollywood for a film festival called Dances with Films. Mm -hmm. Strongly recommend this festival. Absolutely. It's it's a lot of really great uh, indie movies to check out. So strong recommendation to go to dances with films this weekend. Uh, I am seeing, uh, Alejandro Montoya's, uh, short film is a short film in the shorts program at five. I'll probably get there about four Dante James and I are going to be there. Then we're going to go down the street in Hollywood to Jameson's, which is an Irish pub for an after party about seven ish. So look oh, for us there. If you're in that's Hollywood. Where my screening starts. So yeah, well, I'll say hi to you. I'll yeah, say hi to you. It dances with films. And I'm just going to hang out with uh, filmmakers and, and whatnot. And then Saturday on July 1st is American Pride Month. It lasts all the month of July. American Pride. And you can actually get this shirt. If you go to shop.filmthreat.com, it says free to be indie. You can get this shirt. Shop.filmthreat.com. Yeah. Uh, Tomorrow I will be in San Diego uh, at the National Comedy Theater, 7:30 to start showtime. Awesome. And I want to thank our mods, Lord Thoth, Polly from Latino Slant, Ms. Peak Coffee, Glenn. I want to thank Glenn Brown, our producer. He he'll post these. I he'll post like new videos for us to show where like I haven't seen it, and I'll just play it. One last super chat here from Bush Re. Bushin Ryu Cat for two. Chris, how do I order your movie? The site has no link. The site will have a link later today. You can go to shop.filmthreat.com. Click on sale. Click on on sale. And hey, Heel versus Babyface. YouTube hey. ate my super chat. Hey, as, and by the way, as is going to be here on Wednesday, July 12th for Critics Court. Uh, along with Gary from Nerdrotic. Uh, I don't know if I told you that as, but yeah, it's our last, <laughs> it's count nine. It's the last, last uh, count in the ongoing case. Hey, as can I, I cannot wait. Hey, uh, after this, just go FNT starts in two hours. This is going to be probably the greatest episode of Friday Night Tights ever talking about Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. I cannot wait. So as I'm driving to this film festival in Hollywood, I'm going to be listening to the show. As always good to hear from you. Uh, just one of the uh, great, I mean, I, I, oh my God. One of the best things As did was playing Gollum. He was playing, I don't mean playing Gollum like the character. I mean, playing the Gollum video game and I would like As to put together a compilation, eight hours of As questioning his life. When he would like get to a point where like the game is stupid and it's like things don't like just the collision detection, just everything about this game is terrible. And so As would like just pull off the headphones and just sit there and stare into space. And it was, I, I died. I died laughing. Um Whenever Az talks about anything, Real BBC is a great show. I watch that. Love it. And go watch now. Uh, Az's review on the Heel versus Babyface channel, his review of Indiana Jake and the Dialys Dialysis of Destiny is up. So go check out the review. I'm going to watch it right after this, Az. I'm going to watch it right after this. And we will leave it there. Uh, always good to hear from Az. What a, he's just a super entertaining and and really just a, a a great person. We've had private conversations, so really cool. Uh, Alan National Comedy Theater tomorrow tonight. Alan, I will see you in Hollywood at the TCL yes. Chinese, 
And I want to say thank you to members of our jury. Court will be back on July 12th with an epic episode as we wrap up the case. And if you're a member of the channel, we'll be pre-recording, which will run during San Diego Comic-Con, an episode of Critics Court with jury deliberations. Jury deliberations. It's going to be awesome. So thank you. You know, today we had over a thousand people watching. So subscribe to the channel, like, share. Uh, we are, hit that like button. Yes, we appreciate it. And uh, uh, we just, oh, and Nicholas Vargas here. Loved the show today. Lo Nicholas Varga for 999. Love the show today. While I disagree with your indie review, I'm glad that you and I agree on its best moments. It does have, look, it's, it, it, yeah, and crunch those bush hairs, people. Um, By the way, uh, we we had over a thousand watching on YouTube. Uh, right now we have around 700 watching on Rumble. So Wow. Shout yeah. out to the folks on Rumble. I, I watch Rumble. Some of my favorite YouTubers are doing different content on Rumble. And um, I should say that uh, the Tromas channel got, get it, did oh. it get struck or did it get taken down? No, it got taken down. You cannot find Troma on YouTube right now. Oh, Troma has to go to Rumble. Troma, what is Troma? I mean, I know that like Lloyd can be outspoken politically speaking, but he's yeah. pretty innocuous. Like, but I also, love all that content has been on there for years. Why all of a sudden now is it is it being taken down? Utterly ridiculous. So, yeah, Alan, uh, Alan, uh, take us out. Let's get out of here. Going down. It's 32. <laughs> uh, sorry, I got it right. I clicked the wrong video. Alan, would you take us out? Yeah, let's get out of here who understands and has an appreciation for fans. Well, he's 19 years old. She's 32. Whoa. Yeah. Okay, for real this time. Yeah, let's get out of here. Finish him. Oh, my, my jeans. All right, all right, let's let's oh, get yeah. out of here. I'll I'll see you later today, Alan. Take yeah, care. See you later. Take care, buddy. Bye. Bye. Bye.